I got into journalism when I was, uh, you know, my late teens, early 20s. Started writing, started designing uh, newspapers. It was newspapers. Newspapers were still the thing, like the web existed, but, uh, you know, people weren't doing a lot of it. And then I got into the web after that, uh, you know, uh, caught on. Uh, so graphic design was sort of my, was what I started with. Um, and then digital video happened in the early, around 2000 or so. Um, and then I like just transitioned over to that. Like I had skills, like I knew how to, you know, run graphic software so I could, I could apply some of that stuff to, um, to video. So I just started making videos for fun. I started making comedy videos. That, that was what I started with. Uh, made like sketches and video blogs and, you know, just, just had fun and got better and better at it. And then eventually I got a draw a job in, in video production. Uh, and then I made everything, everything is a remix, which was a series about creativity from, it started about 10 years ago, ran for a couple of years. Um, and that was like a big, big success. And I started doing talks and getting freelance video commissions and stuff like that. And then basically since then, I've been able to like kind of keep maintain a freelance video independent creator lifestyle somehow which is like not not easy very stressful very dodgy but i've somehow uh, managed to stay to keep doing it uh and then i started another series after that called this is not a conspiracy theory which i finished just last year so that was a, like a feature length documentary about conspiracy theories so i ended up like kind of getting into sort of conspiracy theories that that ostensibly that that's a big part of what I've been doing lately. So misinformation and disinformation, those have been big themes for me, but also uh, I'm very into systems, which is something that I was into and everything is remixed. It was about uh, copyright and laws and policies and what, kind, what kinds of incentives are created. And I'm very into systems because I feel like they're the thing that people are, systems are just kind of the rules of society. They're very abstract. They're kind of difficult to, 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 to get your arms around. So I've been trying to kind of popularize the concept of systems, of rules, of the incentives that they create, uh, because I think a lot of people, they see conspiracies where there actually are just systems. They think things are coordinated by a bunch of people, like puppet masters, like pulling the strings, when actually it's the rules that have been set up sometimes, and often it's not by governments, often it's by, it's by culture. It just emerged from all of us agreeing that things work a certain way. But a ton, uh, an incredible amount of the time, it's technology. And the rules aren't designed necessarily intentionally, I think. Oftentimes, they just sort of emerge. They pop up. Like, people start, Mark Zuckerberg start, starts Facebook, and then eventually it has all these rules. But he didn't have a plan. You know, he wasn't, wasn't intending to, uh, to he, I, I don't think he even wanted to be a media company. You know, he's always resisted that idea. And, yeah, you know, here we are. So I ended up in, in conspiracy world and systems world, and those are sort of my current my current uh, passions. But I'm also doing everything as remix again. I'm gonna like reboot it, retell the story in a in a new way. Uh, hopefully this year. I've researched basically from the '50s onward. I have a good familiar familiar familiarity with conspiracy theories, and you certainly could do it. It was brochures in the old days, right? Like you had to print off a bunch of paper documents and then you had to hand them out in the street or mail them out uh, or whatever. So it was, uh, it was expensive, right? You had to print a bunch of paper. You had to distribute it in some fashion. It was more like running a newspaper is now or whatever, right? Like it was, uh, it was expensive and cumbersome and slow. So um, you could do, it was hard in the old days and now it's easy. And we're dealing with, we're grappling with that, right? Like, and this stuff can, can magnify in a way that it never used to be able to, right? Like it was hard for other, for conspiracy people to find each other and sort of form a culture, form a little, it's more culty than it used to be, right? Like it's like people can form into communities, they reject outside information, uh, they incentivize each other to believe you know, they give you all sorts of likes and retweets and whatever when you say the right, when you talk about Q, they give you all sorts of rewards, you know, you, you, they, they make you feel good for, for believing the stuff you believe. Um, so it's, it's, become, it's taken on, in my opinion, kind of a culty 
aspect that I think it, it that has always been there, but it was harder to make happen because it was more, it was just harder to form those connections, right? And now it's easier to form those connections. And we've got a real problem on our hands nowadays, right? Like it's a real, there just are people out there who have detached from reality. And I realize that all of us are sort of in our bubbles and we're not, we have, we all have stupid ideas about what we think is going on, but like QAnon uh, and like the election fraud narrative here in the United States, these are like another level of, of just not, of just rejecting what is going on uh, in real life. So we've got a real problem on our hands and how to fix it is, uh, is a real open subject because then we get into the issue of free speech and like what can, what people can or cannot say, which is also something that like, I, I, I'm into that topic. I'm sure you are as well. Like I, I, I support free speech. I want people to be able to say, to speak freely, but at the same time, society has limits, right? Uh, you can't just say whatever, whatever you want. And I mean, it's gotten worse. Like we've had Fox news for whatever, a couple of decades now. Um, but now there's even more extreme outlets like uh, like OAN and Newsmax, where they will fully uh, they're all in on like the election fraud narrative, which like I, I think on Fox News it was a little more like the news division wasn't reporting it as a fact. Uh, it was open it's like the opinion people were kind of talking about, it, but they weren't saying like they weren't outright saying that the election was stolen. That was more online and in these harder, uh, more right-wing outlets. So like there's these, it, it seems to be getting worse <laughs> right now, unfortunately. Like we had this polarization between left and right. And I also feel like outlets like CNN have gotten more left-wing than they used to be, right? Like I felt like, before Trump, honestly, I felt like CNN was, from what I saw of it, was like, it was, it was liberal, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't ranting at you in the same way that it is now. Um, or has been in the post-Trump era. So I feel like the, the liberal stuff has, also, has, of course, also gotten more liberal. Um, so both sides have, have polarized. But I mean, I am a liberal, so I'm not unbiased, but it does seem like the, the mainstream of the right has gone, ha, has gone farther than the mainstream of the left has. Like we just elected Joe Biden, you know, like that's, that's a moderate. That's not somebody who's going to make the that's not somebody that the real left wing part of the the party and the culture it really likes, right? Like they're not they're not that into him. That's not the, that's not their guy. So we elected kind of a moderate. You know, the right went with Donald Trump, who who was a hard right nut job. You know, uh, like they they went really far. So um, I, I am real concerned about the left ultimately <laughs> going crazy as well. Um, but yeah, the polarization is, is a real, uh, real concern as well. We've got real, real, uh, media technology problems going on in this country and how to solve them is, is real tricky. I feel like something has happened is that just a segment of society that we didn't hear from before, uh, like a, like, like a lower class, less educated, uh, part realm of society who weren't in media, they weren't in urban areas, they didn't have, they didn't write for newspapers. You would see them a bit in, in the uh, letters to the editor of a, of a newspaper. You might see them interviewed occasionally uh, on the news, like in, in Manham Street kind of stuff, interviews. So you might see them uh, a little bit there. But I, I feel like part of what's happening is just these people who haven't had a voice before are having a voice now. And there's problems with that, right? Like they're like it's not. Um, how do I say this nicely? Like it, it's just it, it's a young sort of uh, outlook that they have. It's an immature sort of outlook that I that I think uh, we're we're getting. It it hasn't it hasn't achieved maturity yet. Um, so, like when people are attracted to narratives like QAnon or whatever. That's a real like dramatic, exciting story, right? That I think people who don't necessarily watch a lot of news or, or read a lot of nonfiction or whatever, they mostly are watching TV or watching movies or whatever. So they've been indoctrinated in this, this media complex like the rest of us have. 
but I think they think it's more real maybe than, than some of, some of the rest of us do. Like something like QAnon to me, like just the, the drama of the story and like the evilness of the bad guys. Like I find that real suspicious, right? Like I think a lot of us would find that really like, oh, you think people are, you think there's evil people out there that are like murdering and raping children and they're all blackmailing each other. Like, it's just, it's so dramatic that it's like, oh, give me a break. Like this can't possibly be real. Right. Um, so, so there's an immaturity, I think, to uh, a wing of the culture right now where people, and I think that can change, you know, I think that can evolve. Like I, I, like I'm, 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 a bit resistant to being critical of these people. Cause I know, like I grew up in a conservative area. I know these people, I respect these people. I think they have lots of great qualities. Uh, it's just like, is media sophist is news sophistication or comprehension of what's going on in society, like a strong suit of, of folks like this? I, no, I, I don't think it is. They have lots of other, uh, other great qualities. Like they're hardworking and they're, they're loyal and they're fun. Uh, like there's lots of good qualities that these people have, but I think this is an area where, um, you know, I, I think growth needs to happen. Everybody needs to get a little more experienced uh, in terms of understanding what is going on in reality and then like digital literacy, like understanding like, oh, this looks, this just is incredible. Like just being able to look at something like there's a lot of folks out there who just will look at some anonymous blog post from wherever and they just accept it at face value you know they're not like uh, they, they don't have, they don't have a filter like um a lot of us more me, me, people who've worked people who are more experienced with media have a filter and reject lots of stuff right like i think a lot of these people they don't have that experience so they don't know how to do that yet. i think of it almost like um operating systems in technology like you can have something like the mac which is very sent like Apple kind of has, has an iron grip on what goes on on the iPhone or on the Mac or whatever, right? Like it's quite centralized. They have a lot of authority. And then there's something like Windows, which is sort of in between. It's, it's more open. You can, you can uh, there is more freedom to do what you want. And there's something like Linux, which is truly open, but like it's chaotic and it's hard to understand. Uh, it doesn't have the nice integration. It doesn't have the nice aesthetic and design that like uh, Apple products do. And I think like we're always trying to find this kind of balance between closed where things are regulated and there's more, uh, things are kind of managed in, in a better way and negative, uh, negative outcomes are suppressed more effectively. But if you go too far with that, then it gets really constrained and really uh, people don't have enough freedom to innovate. They don't have enough freedom to express themselves. So we're always kind of trying, I, I think like finding this balance between open and closed um, I think is, you know, it's an ongoing battle and conversation and you can go too far one, you, you can, you can, you can go too far in either direction, right? Like it can be too open and there's lots of hacking going on and lots of, uh, you know, lots of scams and BS. Like it, you could argue that like the, me the, the information media escape is too open right now, right? Like we are, bullshit and uh slander and like some of this stuff it's not just lies it's also like like there's a the, the part of the election problems this company called uh dominion voting systems uh there there's these stories going around that they're funded by hugo chavez <laughs> that's just crazy anyway they're suing people lately right for uh because they're damn because their business has been badly damaged right by these a totally unsubstantiated uh, baloney claims, right? So people are also like, they're having their lives harmed by this freedom, right? Like this business has been perhaps irrevo irrevocably damaged, right? By just people spouting this nonsense. Um, on the other hand, if you suppress the speech too much, then people can't speak freely and have uh, conversations and, and evolve to, to something better. Um, but I would be concerned, I like that, that Europe hasn't fostered its own tech. I, to me, seems, I, I, I don't know a lot about what's going on in Europe, but that seems a bit concerning to me. Like, like what's going on there that, that, that people can't innovate uh, at a high level, that it's just not taking root there. I, I would definitely be concerned about that. So 
I defer, generally speaking, I want things more open. I'm okay with a little more, with, with some amount of chaos, uh, but I'm not, uh, I, I won't just tolerate whatever, right? Like there are limits. Uh, but I personally think we should defer more to, to, the, to, to things being open, people being able to say what they want, pe people being able to, to innovate and come up with, with new ideas. It just it needs to be it needs to be a topic that people that kids are taught in school for sure. But I also feel like younger people, gosh, am, am I? Do I really think this? I feel like plenty of younger people they feel like oh, if it's just some story on the internet, like who knows if that's real or not, right? Like I definitely know some some young people who look at things that they look at the internet with a lot of skepticism, right? Um, and they're maybe a bit cynical. They're maybe kind of slow to believe kind of uh, kind of anything. Um, so it's certainly, I think, you know, just straight up education is, is what works for younger people. For older people, I think, uh, like, it might just be that, uh, we're not going to get some of these people back, you know, like, like that, that could be part of it. Um, that might be part of what happens, but I think, uh, like the rest of us, I think need to apply gentle pressure to our parents and grandparents or, who, or whoever these folks are. I think we need to make it a social movement, just like try to, without lecturing them, without berating them or making them feel stupid, you know, just just pushing back and try, kind of trying to pull them back from these uh, really extreme ideas that are that are circulating right now. So I like the idea of a social movement where we all kind of help out the older generation who are, are slower to, to figure these things out. Because I don't, aside from that, aside from more regulation for what can go on on these platforms, I'm not sure what else we can do. But it might be that just people need to, you know, people are just going to, those people are going to get old and die. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's how some things work in society. Like those, those, there's old beliefs, like if there were people who were 300 years old right now, there would be people who believe in slavery, you know, like they wouldn't give up on those ideas, they would keep them. Uh, so there's just the, the cycling of society, the coming and going of generations might help us out a bit here. Like I understand the criticisms of the media sphere, like their tendency to exaggerate, their tendency towards groupthink, like some topic becomes a thing and then they're all on the thing. Um, they're kind of clickbaity quality to the, to the news. Like I understand these criticisms and it's produced, right? Like it's, it's, it's not just reality, it's this show that somebody is creating for you, right? So I, it, it's artificial to some degree. So I get these criticisms of the news, but I, I just generally feel like people go too far with this stuff, right? Like they start to think that what's happening when there's just like factual claims in the news that they don't believe that either. Uh, whereas I feel like the strong suit of news reporting is just like if an event, if something just physically happened in the world and they say like this person was there and that and that happened and whatever, and then a bunch of different reporters all say the same thing, we can all go, okay, well like, like we have a good idea about what happened with the storming of the Capitol in, in Washington, DC, right? Like not only were there lots of reporters there, there were lots of just people documenting it. And we have a, an excellent comprehension of, of what happened there, right? So I think you can believe a lot of the reporting of, of what happened there. So when there are these people who are thinking that like Antifa made it like, you know, the, the conspiracy theorists, it's just like, oh, come on. Like, that's just like, we can, like, we, we know who these people are who, who went in the building, like they're known figures on them. So I feel like kids have gotten, I understand where the criticism comes from, but I feel like a lot of younger people, they just do to go too far with that. And um, there, there's some overestimating of your friends and stuff, you know, like, like you, your friends don't know, like, what do they know about these topics, you know? So I feel, I actually feel like people have gone too far with criticizing the news. I feel I would love to see the news innovate and get better for sure. Like, like that's, that's really, I, that's what I'd really love to see that I don't feel like I am really seeing. I don't feel like I'm really seeing them kind of change the game. Uh, and I, I would love to see that, but I feel like younger people have gone too far with being, being skeptical of the news often. It's a, real concern and like what the way again it's another one of these things where like what the solution is i'm not sure but 
they're too big. Like they're too, and they're too big. It's easy to think, oh, they're really big because uh, they're really ruthless and they just wanted more and more market share and they just went out there and got it. But I think like we are responsible for the size of these companies. Like we like having that one place, like you want to search for something, you go to Google and you, and you do it there. Like you want to buy whatever you go to Amazon and you do it there. Like uh, you want a computer, you get Windows or you get the Mac, right? Like we, we like... We like everybody using it's 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 efficient for the rest of us when people just use the same thing, right? Like that's we're attracted to um, to using common services, right? Like I use FaceTime and my mom uses FaceTime, so we both buy iPhones, and and uh, you know that 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 works. That's a win for everybody. It keeps things simpler. So people can create these kinds of monocultures. I think we as a culture are responsible for creating these giant. Uh, corporations, like if we, if people were like, I don't want to use Facebook, I'm going to use something else, then we, we wouldn't have this problem to the same degree. But indisputably, they are too freaking gigantic and that they are not just tech companies, but like, it'd be one thing if, um, if Apple like just made computers or just made phones or whatever, uh, or Amazon just sold books or something like that. Like if they were just sort of, if they were really big, but they were just sort of constrained more to a single realm, that would be very different. But they're such, they're such multifaceted, gigantic things that they control a bunch of different levers of power, right? Like that's really, really concerning. They're just too big. So I do feel like breaking them up is a potential uh, option. I, I, I would be open to breaking them up possibly. Uh, but again, like how you do that is not obvious. Like how, like if you wanna break up YouTube, how do you break up YouTube? Like the benefit of YouTube is that like, you, it's like the video site and that's where kind of everything is. Like, what, do you make like a kid's YouTube and an adult's YouTube? I don't know, like maybe that's a start, but like how you split these things up is, is, is real tricky as well. But there's definitely a problem with the scale of them. And I feel like at like, um, that we need to, we need innovation. And I feel like us owning our data is part of it. Like um, if there could be some sort of solution where the data that is accrued about me on Google or whatever, and you can do some of this now, they do, they do, some of those features are there. If you can take that with you, when you leave, you can delete it, you can wipe it, you can do whatever, like it's, it's your possession. And yes, they can run ads and they can make money on it and all that stuff while they have it. But if you have, if it's your property uh, and you can do with it as you will and take it to other services and kind of do whatever you want with it, I think that would be a help as well. So it seems like we need some sort of digital rights movement as well. All this stuff is real tricky. You know, like what the answers are is, is totally non-obvious. Um, so these are real complicated problems and we're gonna need a lot of different people working on them with a lot of different perspectives uh, and a lot we're gonna have to throw a lot of different ideas at the wall because what's going to work uh, is not clear but there's definitely it, it's not sustainable what we're doing and it's funny too like there, there there's some of the decisions that have gone on on like Twitter or Facebook for me where like the banning of QAnon uh, to me that was like that seemed like the right call to me. Like, I don't know what else you do. Like you just let it keep growing in the belief that, well, at some point it's going to, people are going to get wise to it and then it'll die down again. Well, when's that going to happen? Like I, I followed it for a couple of years. It's just growing and growing and growing and growing. Like, what are we supposed to do? Like, I feel like, like something has to happen, but what if it's some call that you don't like next time, right? Like, what if it's, uh, oh, there's, I mean, whatever it is, just something that, that you don't agree with uh, and they're just pulling a lever and, and canceling it. That's a real concern for sure. So I think like when people look at these problems, you have to think like, uh, what if I didn't like the decision that they're making? Uh, how would I feel about it? Uh, and I, I wouldn't feel good about these centralized, opaque decisions that are often going on. It's so, I mean, like what it's going, like, it's really going to be concerning, like you're talking about this journalist who lost her job, like there are going to be lawyers who lose their jobs, like it's just a matter of time until you can have some sort of AI that can 
uh, parse legal claims more efficiently than a person can. I don't think it's even that far in the future, right? So there are lots of the, there's lots of this sort of administrative stuff that that's coming up. Uh, technical sort of tasks that we need people for now that are going to get, they're going to start. So basically like middle class people are going to start losing their jobs to AI. And traditionally through, for the, through the industrial revolution and, and the early information economy, it's been the working class that has taken the brunt of this, right? And this is a big part of what's going on with, with populism in, in the world is that you know, these jobs have gone to China or they, or in, in many cases, they've become robots. I believe in, in North America that that's often what's happening. They've, they've been, uh, the people have, have been let go in favor of machines. So uh, I think uh, a universal basic income is is something that like, I believe, I think it was Elon Musk said, it's just, we're, we're not going to have a choice, but to do it. So that's going to be something that I think will be in, in play uh, as, as an option that people are just going to have to try and experiment with and improve and see what happens and see if it's sustainable uh, at all. But that's a huge, that's a massive uh, mind breaker there. And just how fast it's going to move is also like, I, I'm not clear on, like, is it going to be, like, I know that this, this technology is exponentially improving, but in terms of what it's gonna feel like in our life, I'm, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. Like, is it another, 10 years before we start seeing kind of weird stuff, like thing, like things that like, whoa, like I'm talking to a machine right now. That's pretty, like if you call up tech support or whatever, and you, you talk to a robot and, and it's like, whoa, that sounds like a person. <laughs> like what is going on here? Like, when are we going to see uh, that sort of stuff? You know, I'm, I'm not so sure. Cause in a lot of ways, AI, AI, is, AI is still, I would say quite uh, primitive, generally speaking right now. It, it, it's not good at fooling us, generally speaking, but boy, that, like, that could potentially change really fast. So I'm sorry that I don't have a better answer to that, but you know what? I'm not sure anybody does. I, I'm not sure that, uh, I think like if you asked a bunch of people that, I, I'd be curious what, how, how you do with it. Like, I think you get like a piece from, from a bunch of different people that might uh, add up to something, but that's, uh, that's a real head scratcher that's gonna take a lot of brilliant minds working on to figure out how people, how economies continue to exist when potentially a bunch of work has been sucked up by AIs and machines, right? Like what do humans do? There's lots of dystopia sort of scenarios that can possibly, sort of Skynet type scenarios that, that we could get there that, uh, that are definitely uh, concerning. So that's a real realm of concern for people. And I think something that I, I would say I'm especially concerned about is like, what is the pace that, that like, I think we, like these are conversations that need to happen right now, right? You know, like people need to really be talking about this. Like we have people in the, in the US like Andrew Yang who are, who are bringing this topic up. And I think like people, like people really need to be thinking about this and talking about this and, and working on this topic because otherwise what could happen is like suddenly it's happening, like you're in it. And uh, so suddenly, like, just people are losing jobs left, right, and center. And what do we do about it? Then it's too late, you know, then, then we're really in trouble. So I think people need to start having this conversation right now. Mm -hmm.